So this week, we wanted to show you burning noodles, a much-beloved dish from the town of Yibin in southern Sichuan. The noodles have got this hit of nuttiness, some complexity in the form of their local fermented mustard greens, yatsai, and of course, a good bit of spice. But the reason it's called burning noodles actually doesn't really have anything to do with chilies or scovilles. See, the character ran, or burning, directly translated means to ignite. It refers to the fact that this is decidedly not a soup noodle dish. So much not a soup noodle dish, in fact, you could theoretically take a lighter to the noodle and actually scorch the thing. As for why, you can actually find this sort of explicitly not soup noodle dish up and down the upper reaches of the Yangtze River. Probably most famous might be Wuhan's hot dry noodle, the dry referring to, well, that it's not a soup noodle. Go a bit further up and you can find Wanzhou's Zhajiang noodle, and after that get to Chongqing's Mala Xiao Mian, which was, in the past, also served dry, not in soup like it is today. And of course, once you arrive at the Yangtze's highest navigable point, Yibin, you're greeted with burning noodles. Now, all of these cities are places historically defined by the Yangtze River trade, which back in the day was an infamously harrowing journey, especially in the river's upper reaches. Even well into the steamboat age, the journey had to be completed with the assistance of tow men, men that would literally pull the barges upstream with their bare hands, their work chants called haozi, ringing through the perilous gorges. So there's always been this sort of fluvial toughness to the people there. It's likely these river towns that were the first in China to use chili pepper extensively. It's got one of the strongest winter swimming cultures in the country. And I think it's probably no coincidence that much of China's underground punk and heavy metal scenes center around Wuhan and Chongqing. As for why all of these cities have dry noodles, the sources are super, super murky. It could really be any number of things, but the explanation we liked best was that the people working on the docks wanted to be able to grab a bowl of noodles and go. A rocky boat isn't exactly the best place for a soup noodle after all. But history aside, to get started with Yibin burning noodles, you'll need noodles. Fresh alkaline noodles to be exact. Now, we can generally just waltz into our local market and pick up some fresh alkaline noodles. But I know most of you living outside China aren't so lucky. So while you can totally sub in something like a proper ramen noodle, for the sake of completeness, let's just show you how to make some Sichuan style alkaline noodles real quick. To make this though, you'll need an ingredient called jian mian, that is, sodium carbonate. Note that sodium carbonate is a much stronger base than sodium bicarbonate, that is, baking soda. It's got a pH around 11.5 compared to baking soda's 8.5, pH being logarithmic and all, you'd need exponentially more baking soda to have the same effect. You should be able to buy some sodium carbonate online, but barring that, you can also spread out some baking soda on a tray and bake it for one hour at around 150 centigrade. See, at temperatures above 80 Celsius, baking soda decomposes, forming water vapor, carbon dioxide, and the sodium carbonate that you'll need. Either way, mix a half teaspoon of sodium carbonate in with 125 grams of water, then drizzle that into 300 grams of bread or noodle flour. You'll want the noodles to have a pretty significant bite to them, which is why we're using a high gluten flour and making a pretty dry dough. For those of you keeping score, we're at about 42% hydration, but we've seen some recipes go even lower than 40. So now, while this would obviously be done by hand traditionally, I, your narrator, am truthfully not the most experienced noodle maker ever, so I'm going to make my life easy and use a stand mixer with a hook attachment. So let that go for 8 minutes on speed 2, or alternatively knead by hand for the same duration. After that time, you'll probably see that the dough is still looking crumbly. Don't panic, just press and knead it all together, and let that rest for a half an hour. Now, second untraditional thing, we'll be using a pasta maker today. Again, you can totally roll this out thin by hand, and if you'd like to see how, check out our Jiajiang Man video up here. That said, a pasta maker will make our life a bit easier, and noodle workshops in China these days generally use machines anyhow. So toss that through the pasta maker at the widest setting, then pass it through again at the third smallest setting. Then thoroughly flour both sides of the dough and fold three or four times. Now grab a knife and slice that dough into noodles. You're looking for something that's about two millimeters wide, Though with hand-cut noodles, it's totally normal to have some that end up a little thinner or a little thicker. Separate out the noodles, flour them up, and use any time with the next day or so. So besides the noodles, what makes a burning noodle a burning noodle are its toppings. It's generally loaded up with crushed peanuts and sesame seeds, a generous bit of sliced scallions, and of course, yibin yatsai. If you're familiar with dandan dan noodles or some other classic Sichuan dishes, you've probably heard of yatsai, pickled and fermented mustard green. Yatsai famously comes from Yibin and is unfortunately one of those ingredients with no real subs. You could potentially play around with some other Chinese preserved vegetables, but honestly, Yatsai is so fundamental here that if you can't find it, I'd probably just recommend making something else. 
But then together with those toppings, the noodles are also mixed with a heavy dose of an Yibin-style chili oil called xiangyou. It's probably equally as fundamental to the dish as the yatsai, so let's start there. So this oil starts with toasted chili powder, traditionally a mix of two parts Sichuan Argentiao chili, so here 20 grams, and one part heaven-facing chili, so for us that's 10 grams. Now I do know that Sichuan Argentiao are really tough to buy outside China, so feel free to sub those with some arbols or cayennes if you have to. So then toast your chilies in a dry wok over a medium-low flame for about 5 minutes. The chilies will be done once they've deepened in color and started to smell real nice. After that, snip the chilies into about 1 centimeter long slices, leaving the seeds but tossing the stems, and pulse the chilies into a powder. Now of course, if you're looking for shortcuts, feel free to just use a good chili powder here instead of making it from scratch. It's just that most chili powders sold in Sichuan are toasted chili powders, and I'm not sure if that's true with something like a western style cayenne pepper. Then to make the chili oil, for this dish the most proper would be a base of Sichuan Saizio, which is a sort of virgin rapeseed oil. It is aggressively unavailable in the west, so if you can nab some, use Indian mustard seed oil instead. It's basically a direct sub. Barring that, just go with peanut oil, but no matter what, heat up 60 grams worth till it begins to smoke, or about 230 centigrade. Keep it there for a minute or two, then shut off the heat. This process will remove the pungency of the raw rapeseed oil, and is also an important step in using Indian mustard seed oil as well. Once it's cooled down a touch to about 210 Celsius, add in 25 grams of crushed ginger, one whole walnut, a half a cinnamon stick, two star anise, and a teaspoon Sichuan peppercorn. This will lower the temperature, so fry those for about 5 minutes over a low flame, or until the oil's reached about 150 degrees. Then take out the clunkier spices and strain that into your chili powder. Give it a good stir, then pour in 60 grams of melted lard. And if you're keeping veg, feel free to swap the lard with some cooked peanut oil. And with that, your xiangyo is done. You can use it immediately in a pinch, but this chili oil is always better the next day. Now for the peanuts and sesame. If you can use unsalted roasted peanuts, feel free to use those. But here we're using raw, so we'll be toasting those over a medium flame for about 12 minutes, or until the peanuts are cooked through and charred on the outside. Then to peel, a cool technique is to rub the toasted peanuts between your fingers, then lightly blow the peanuts to get off the peels, much faster than going one by one. Then to crush, let's go with the classic home cooking technique of tossing the peanuts in a bag, then rolling them over with a big Qingdao beer bottle. After about two minutes, the peanuts should be pretty crushed. In the end, you're looking for something that's about this consistency. Then for the sesame seeds, toast them over a medium-low flame for about five minutes, or until they start to deepen in color and you can hear a couple popping. Then just give them a super light pound in a mortar to just barely break them open, and alternatively feel free to use the beer bottle method instead. Then mix them in with the peanuts, and now we can make some noodles. Now fresh noodles cook real fast, so be sure to have everything handy at first. One traditional tool that's used in Yibin is one of these things. Vendors will toss the noodles in after cooking and vigorously strain them. You could do the same thing with a standard strainer, but something conical like a chinois would probably be most effective. So toss the noodles in, here about 150 grams for one portion, and cook until they're just past al dente, or about one minute for this sort of fresh noodle. Then toss the noodles in your strainer of choice, give it a few rigorous shakes, then toss in a bowl. Now immediately go in with all your liquid ingredients, two tablespoons of your yibin chili oil, one teaspoon toasted sesame oil, and one teaspoon light soy sauce, and give that all a thorough mix. Then top with two tablespoons of your peanut sesame mix, two tablespoons yatsai, two tablespoons of sliced scallion, and either a quarter teaspoon of MSG or a half teaspoon chicken bouillon powder, up to you. And with that, your yibin burning noodles are done. Nothing left but to mix it up and devour. So like many beloved dishes, the man also has its own variation. Uh, in one style where uh, the xiangyou doesn't have chili in it, and then the chili itself is added in later separately. And then there's another version which is called tang ren, sugar and mian, which contains sugar and lard. So right, uh, check out the, the link in the description box for a detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.